I've got some maple. I've got some wingy veneer. Let's make some Star Wars inlays. So in Aspire, I made my canvas 20 by 20 inches. I don't know what the final output size is going to be, but it doesn't really matter because once everything is vectorized, we can change the size and shape however we please. I did some searching preliminary, uh, pre did some preliminary searching and found my first order symbol and my Jedi order symbol. We don't even have to move this one, copy this one into Aspire because it's simple enough. Let's see how fast we can do this here. I'm going to go to my polygon tool. It is a hexagon, so six sides. And from the center, I'm going to drag outward and just make an arbitrary size. Close. And that symbol, the point is pointing upwards. So let's rotate it 30 degrees about the center. So next, let's offset inward for that inner margin and let's just test something inwards what does a quarter inch do when we're at the size that we're at maybe a little thin offset and three-eighths Sounds good to me. Next, we have a circle coming from the center. And I'm eyeballing things. That looks pretty good. Maybe it's a touch bigger. If I hold shift, everything sizes about the center. So I'm going to say that looks pretty good. Let's use the same offset for the inner margin of the circle. Looks about the same thickness. Offset, inwards, same settings. Good. Now it's time for these guys going around. Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 total. I'm just going to do my polygon tool again three-sided makes a triangle and again everything's kind of eyeballed here so watch this I'm gonna snap the center the midpoint of this bottom line segment to the bottom node of the circle so those are perfectly centered up and I'm actually going to drag it down just a tad if I hold shift on this grip everything kind of skinnies a little bit and sure what do you think too wide Maybe a little bit too wide. Let's go in just a touch more. Excellent. Next, I'm going to move the center point. Here we go. There he is. If you just click in the center, there is the center point and point of rotation for that vector. And I'm going to drag it to the center of the circle. So now when I use my radial array tool create a circular array of copies and the rotation center is and it just so happens that it is the center of the document so zero zero and I want to make 17 total items I want the total angle is of a circle 360 degrees copy how do we think that looks pretty good there is there is likely a combination of commands for a boolean uh, like a weld so like if let's see if i select these two guys and hit weld nope not what i want um there there's probably some combination but if you don't feel like searching like me right now trim rejoin them as you trim them but basically we want to create whoop, one closed vector because you notice in the actual image, they're all uh, connected here. So give me just a second while I do that. Ta-da! One nice closed vector. And that's it. That one's done. Let's move on.
move this guy off to the side, save him for later. The Jedi Order symbol, I feel like moving into, because it's a little bit more complex, there's some curves and, and things like that, it's going to take a few trimming tricks, but I'm going to show you how we can trace it in a way that is going to be way more uh, effective and accurate than um, a live trace or automatic vector trace of some kind. Let's view the image, right click, copy. Aspire, right click, paste, and here's what we're dealing with. I'm going to make a circle, oh, you know what, and I want to make sure that this is centered on the document, F9. I'm going to make everything from about the center, since we just centered it, click a circle, perfect circle, to the outer ring of the logo, or the symbol. Let's do the same exact thing, find the center, there it is. There we are. We're going to find that the center part of the symbol is not actually centered within this ring. It's kind of frustrating in terms of tracing. So we're going to cheat a little bit. As you can see, I'm making this circle perfectly from the center of what we've already created. So I'm going to make it, but now keeping my vectors in the very center of the image, I'm going to nudge the background image that we're tracing over just a bit so it is centered over what or under what we are creating. So that's close enough. Now it's just a matter of copying circles to the appropriate points to match the edges of all these little fingers or feathers or whatever you want to call them. So if I hold control, it's going to make a copy and I want to put it somewhere near the base of that meeting point. If I hold shift while using a grip, it's going to size everything from per perfectly from about the center. And nudge them upwards. That's pretty good. So for this next one, I'm going to hold control and copy it. Size it down and hold shift and go in from here. It's important that we get them overlapping right there, which is going which is mimicking this guy, so maybe I went in too far. There we go. And that it roughly follows the edge of the next finger up. Nice. Let's hold control to copy him as we go upwards. Bring this guy there. Hold shift. Bring it in. I'm going to keep this process going for the next three and join me at the end when I start trimming. All right, so we could start trimming here, but I think I'm going to finish this inner part. It looks like a, a royal mess, but trust me, once everything's trimmed, it's all going to look great. Let's take my arc tool draw an arc and now that the image is fairly centered uh, I don't mind too much just kind of starting it right about here click a start point click an end point I'm going beyond the vectors because I'm going to trim them and then all I have to do is find the center somewhere and that seems to match well enough for my taste With it selected, here comes my mirror tool about the job center because we are all perfectly centered over the canvas. Make sure you make a copy, flip horizontal. Bingo. Now we just have to trace our sword. Sword, oh my god, what kind of Star Wars fan am I? Our saber. Polyline, and let's start it from exactly at that node and work our way using our guides.
keys selected, mirror, all the same settings, flip horizontal, close, and it is time to trim. It helps if you select the two points that you are trying to trim together. So for this first one, hover and or click and drag and select. So I want to get rid of these two. And same thing over here. Grab you guys. I want to get rid of you two. Notice how these are not joined. I also made a mistake up top. I thought these would overlap when I mirrored them. That is not correct. So what I can do is use my extension. Extend vectors to a common point of intersection. And this is going to go way up above my document. There we go. So that's where they met. And if I right click, join close vector with a line, I believe they have connected now at this point of intersection. Using node editing, I'm going to select him and just nudge him downward to the appropriate height. And I can make it wherever I want. By nudging, I mean I'm holding my up and down arrow keys, by the way. All right, we continue getting rid of the bits that getting rid of the bits we don't want. Don't want them. Don't want them. How about these guys? Don't want them. Don't want him, her. And this is where I was pointing out before. If I select both, right clicked, right with a line, and just to, just to double check, looks like everything is the way it ought to be. Not bad. Now it's time to kick it up a notch. We were able to create these easy enough and you could use a vector like this for all kinds of applications, but we are preparing an inlay in hardwood. So I'm gonna expand my canvas double it widthwise. So now we're looking at both of them side by side. Let's prepare as if we were going to pocket both of these for an inlay on the same board just like this. I'm going to utilize layers here and I'm going to rename layer one, the one that we're on, to female pockets. Add a new layer and call this one male inlay. And since we're on female pocket, I'm going to leave it active. Select all these, right click, copy to layer, and I'm going to make male inlay. And actually, I'm going to change the color so I can tell since they're so identical, uh, even when they're flipped. I'm going to change the male inlay to red. So let's turn off female pocket. And what I'm going to have to do is create a mirrored image. So I'm going to select this guy, mirror image, and I want to uncheck from before. So before we had these selected, I don't want to use the job center. I don't want to make a copy. I've already got a copy where we put it on the male inlay layer and flip horizontal. It's going to appear as though nothing happened because the way we modeled it, it should be perfectly symmetrical. But just in case there are any variances, I'm doing this. Not to mention, if you're doing any other inlay with text or other images, you would mirror it anyway. So it's just good practice to go ahead and do that. So let's select here, mirror, make sure these are unchecked, flipped horizontal. Okay. Lastly, to prepare for our male inlay, I'm going to create a rectangle surrounding, I could do them individually. I could go around the entire material. Either way, as long as 
one way or another, we are recessing around this rather than uh, rather than recessing inside the closed vectors. So, and you'll see what I mean in a moment. So I'm going to take off male inlay, go back to female pocket, and this button will toggle to your toolpaths tab. And the type of inlay, we're, we're not going to use the inlay toolpathing because that's mostly just pocketing. We want to do a V inlay. So we're going to do a V carve, engrave, and let's say that the thickness of your inlay stock is around two tenths of an inch. I'm going to leave a little extra, so I'm going to cut the flat depth to just a couple of hundredths under and leave a little material that we can sand off or cut off. And so I'm going to be using a 60 degree quarter inch V bit. For my flat area clearance tool, that is all the area that I, I don't want to waste time trying to clear with my pointy V bit. I'm using a quarter inch end mill. And let's change the name of this so we're not confused to female pocket. And silly me, we've got to select what we want to use. Now calculate. And let's give it some color so we can see what we're dealing with here. The areas in black are what will be carved. Simple enough. Next, let's go to our male inlay layer. I'm going to turn it on, turn female pocket off. We want to make a nearly identical toolpath, only the, only the parts that we carved into before we want we want remaining and vice versa. So I'm going to use this, what I've already got, right click and duplicate that toolpath. When I double click into it, keep all the same settings, only this time I'm going to select these vectors and its outer border. And that will make sure that we are um, carving around the, the graphics and leaving the closed groups alone. If I go to here, male, inlay, calculate, and it looks a little odd at first because of our uh, previous preview. So if I reset the preview and preview the visible toolpaths, and then you can see we have the opposite of what's going on. And when we cut these out from their back. We have a perfect match that will then sit into the pocketed inlay. Easy. Star Wars Episode 8 is coming out soon, and I couldn't be more excited. Hopefully before it comes out, you'll see the video of me making these cutting boards and actually applying the inlays into them. If I don't finish it before the release, well, you'll see it after the movie comes out. But until then, I hope you learned something today, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.